Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics, looking at atomic structure as part of the Quantum Mechanics Unit. Now in this video we're going to explore the use of radiation in the exploration of how the atomic structure was um, discovered. Now there are four main scientists who basically paved the way for our understanding of radiation and the use of radiation in our discovery of the atomic structure. The first was Wilhelm Wundgen who basically was a German engineer and physicist who explored the material um, of electromagnetic radiation, which was found to be in the form of X-rays. Now, as a result, he then produced pictures of um, various objects using this energy, um, this, these X-rays, um, which allowed us to actually look and penetrate deep within the body. And here's a photo of his hand and various objects to see the penetrating effect of the X-rays. The second scientist was a French scientist, uh, Henri Becquerel. Um, he basically worked with um, radiation. He was exploring the idea of this unknown energy that was emitted from certain types of rocks, later to be known that these rocks actually contained uranium. Now his experiment was that he took a photographic plate wrapped it in thick black paper, put the rock on top of the black paper, and the result was um, that he, he deduced that if he left it in the sun, the sun would energise the rock and give off this unknown energy, which left a silhouette on the paper. And an example of this can be seen here, um, which is a, um, an image of his photographic plate. Anyway, one day he was setting up his experiment, and it was raining, and as a result he left the photographic plate and the black paper, put it in the drawer, put the rock on top and shut the drawer. Anyway, when he developed the plate later, he actually got these silhouettes, as you can see in the, in the image here. Obviously, the sun had no bearing on this energy. There was something inside the rock which actually was giving off this radiation. As a result of this, um, his surname was utilised to um, identify form of radiation. So whenever we talk about radiation, the units are always in Becquerel's. This paved the way for a female scientist who moved from Poland to Paris, where, he was, where Becquerel was doing his study, and uh, her name was Marie Curie. Now, while she was in Paris, she met Pierre Curie, and between the two of them, they actually isolated the radioactive substance. In this case, the radioactive substance was a radium. She also went on to produce um, polonium, or, or identify polonium. Now, radium in itself was then utilised in a lot of um, uh, different substances, makeups, and then it was utilised also in spas. Here's an example of um, a radium-induced spa, which was um, all the rage in the time. Marie Curie is famous because, basically, she was the first woman to gain a Nobel Prize. She was the first woman ever to receive two Nobel Prizes, and she was the first woman to become professor at the University of Paris. So these um, four main um, scientists basically paved the way for the use of radiation. Now, the next scientist that we're going to look at was um, Ernest Rutherford, um, who utilised the radiation to actually look at the atomic structure. But before we do that, let's just revisit what the various radioactive particles are. So we know that there are three main radioactive particles, alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, alpha is a big particle coming from the nucleus of the atom, which basically is made up of two protons and two neutrons. Predominantly, it's a helium nucleus. A beta particle is basically an, ele an electron. Now, the um, electron comes from the breakdown of the neutron. So you may wonder, how is it that we get electrons coming out of the nucleus? But what actually happens, the unstable neutrons split apart into a proton and a neutron. Gamma is in the form of pure energy. Now, if you take the concept of Einstein's theory of relativity equals mc squared, this energy was going to link with mass. Now, alpha, obviously just being made up of protons and neutrons, has a positive charge. Beta has a negative charge, and gamma, being pure energy, has no charge at all. You can see that the speed of light here varies, that um, alpha is a big sluggish particle, so actually goes quite slowly, only 10% the speed of light. The electron is a very, very fast particle, 
So as a result, it moves at um, 90% the speed of light. And gamma being pure energy and being part of the electromagnetic spectrum has travels at the speed of light. So let's have a look at its penetrating effects because this is what's important when we're exploring what's going into the atom. So this um, simulation here shows our radioactive source on the left-hand side. Now if we look at the alpha particle first, we notice that the alpha particle will only um, will actually be stopped by a simple sheet of paper. If we look at a beta particle, the beta particle is able to pass through sheets of paper, but it will be stopped by any metal foil. And then finally, if we look at gamma, gamma will pass through the paper, the metal foil, but it will be stopped by concrete, lead, or steel. And this is often why um, radioactive fuel sources, when they're when they've been used up in the nuclear power station, are stored in concrete bunkers or containers to prevent the radiation actually being emitted. Now, as we said, alpha then is least penetrating, followed by beta, and then finally we've got um, our gamma particle. Now, gamma was actually identified by the French physicist Paul Villard, and um, he was the last person to basically add the last little piece to our radiation um, theory. The particles also have the ability to ionize um, an atom. Now, you can see here, that on the, and again in the simulation, we've got an atom shown by the rings with the electrons on the outside, and then we've got our ionizing particle. Now, notice this is either going to be an alpha or a beta particle. Gamma being pure energy has no effect. So how does it ionize? Well, as it moves, it knocks off the electron, and as a result, by knocking off the electron, the um, ion becomes positively charged. So the, the speed and motion of the actual radioactive particle will knock off that electron. So alpha is probably our, um, or is our most powerful ionizing particle. This is then followed by beta, and gamma has no or very little effect with respect to knocking off or ionizing the, um, the actual atom. With respect to magnetic fields, because of their charges, they are affected um, by magnetic fields. Remember, um, if you go back and check out my electromagnetic um, magnetism um, I Tuned You course, we know that if any charge moves through a magnetic field, it generates its own magnetic field. As a result, this is going to produce a force. The force basically will push against the motion of the particle. So if we look at the alpha particle, the alpha particle is positively charged. So if we've got the charge going into the right, we basically use our right hand slack rule here. And if you remember, we've got to use our fingers. Our fingers basically are the direction of the uh, magnetic field. In this case, it's going into the page. Our thumb is the direction of the alpha particle. And our palm is the force which is applied on that alpha particle. So if we put an alpha particle in a magnetic field, it moves to the left hand side. Now gamma being pure energy has got no charge whatsoever, so as a result when it passes through the magnetic field, it's unaffected. Um, there is no force that's generated. Um, for beta particles, they are negatively charged, so we use our left hand rule. Our left hand slap rule allows us to determine its direction. And what we notice, fingers going in, Thumb is going to be the direction. It, remember, it's coming from that radioactive source at the bottom, which is stored within the lead container. And what we notice is that the force will be pushed to the right-hand side. So on our photographic plate, we'll get a spot which goes to the right-hand side. Notice the beta is um, affected or turned more. That's because it's a lighter particle. Alpha requires a lot more force to actually push it through. So let's have a look at Ernest Rutherford. How did he utilize these particles in order to determine the structure of the element? Well, we all know about his um, famous gold foil uh, experiment. And what he basically did, he got an alpha particle emitter and fired it a very, very thin gold foil, which was only a few micrometers thick. He then had this, um, the, this gold foil um, stationed inside um, a detecting screen, which basically had um, a fluorescent um, surface. And what he noticed was he was trying to prove J.J. Thomson's theory of the plum, plum pudding idea, that as particles pass through, we've got this 
this positive particle with this random negativity in the middle. Now remember that alpha particles are positively charged. And what he noticed was that he got this um, scattering of these alpha particles. Some passed straight through, some were deflected, and um, some rebelled, were, were rebounded. And this image basically shows you how the observations occurred. So we've obviously got our first um, particles going straight through. And as from this, he concluded that the atom is predominantly made up of empty space. Then he's got particles which have rebounded. Now, when they're rebounded back, obviously there is something which is pushing it. Now, the force of repulsion has got to be due to posit a positive charge. Because remember that um, alpha particles are two protons and two neutrons. Neutrons have no charge, so the two protons gives the alpha particle this heavy positive charge. He also noticed that some particles which w were deflected, and you can see this here with the, um, the, the pink um, highlight, showing that the alpha particles are coming in, they're hitting a substance in the middle and being deflected away. From this, he deduced that the part of the nucleus is dense and it is positively charged, which is causing this repulsion of the positively charged alpha particles. So to recap, the atom is predominantly space. It's got a dense nucleus, which is positively charged. Rutherford was also able to knock out a proton out of this nucle nucleus and identify the proton. And then James Chadwick was a then a, um, able to discover the existence of neutrons, which are present in the nucleus. So as a result, we've got this image here to show our new model of the atom, which basically was made up of lots of electrons spinning around the outside with a dense, positively charged nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. As a result of this, Ernest Rutherford in 1908 was given the Nobel Prize for his investigations into the disintegration of the elements and the chemistry of radioactive elements and the chemistry of radioactive substances. So check out more resources on my Aussie Physics website. The um, website is down at the bottom there for you to check out. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to you meeting me again. Bye for now.